Hey guys, what's up? It's Diaper Mito. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here in FL Studio and we're going to be breaking down beats off of the new Little Dirk album, 7220, 7220, I'm not really sure. There's two main styles of beats on this album. There's like pain beats that you would hear for more like Rod Wave, 2C, Lil Dirk. And then there's more of the street style of beats that you would hear for like Lil Baby, Lil Dirk, Pooh Shiesty even, stuff like that. Before I get into the video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, two weeks ago, I dropped a free loop kit that's got some like King Von, Lil Baby, Lil Dirk type of loops in it, more of the street style. And last week, I dropped a pain loop kit. Both of those are in the playlist that I'm going to link up in the card in the corner, so definitely check those out. They're both free, some really good loops in there, so definitely check it out. So I have a beat in both styles that I'm going to be breaking down, but let's start off with the pain beat for your tempo you're pretty much going to want to be in the range of like 155 bpm to 170 bpm for the melodies of these beats 99 percent of the time it's going to be pianos so we've just got a pretty standard pain melody right here we started off with a nice little chord progression there's really nothing crazy then i just added some bass notes these aren't actually the root notes of the chords but i just thought it sounded nice as a little counter melody then up here we've got our top melody i know it looks kind of complicated but it's really not if we cut off each note at the beginning of the next note it looks much more simple starting off we've just got this little lick right here that repeats every other bar only thing that's changing is that we are changing this last note a little bit that's just to make it a little bit more interesting then in the second half of the melody we're doing the same thing except for we're going up on the second note instead of down then each time it loops we've just got a couple pickup notes then we also have some grace notes added in here and there and then at the end of the loop we've just got this little run sounds like this Next I just layered the chords with a pad, very simple, there's not really much to explain here. This is what it sounds like. Then we just have a little guitar lick. You're gonna hear stuff like this in most pain beats. I just went with Arcade and I found this kit right here. Chopped is usually the line that I go for for guitars and stuff like this, especially for pain beats. We just laid out a couple notes, there's really nothing crazy going on. This is what it sounds like. After that, we've got this vocal chop melody. Again, I just went with Arcade, found a nice little line, and laid out a few notes. If you don't have Arcade, you can also just sing this yourself and record it and then pitch it up an octave, or if you can find samples online and stuff, you just gotta dig a little bit. Arcade is definitely the easiest way, but there's definitely some other good ways. So don't think that you can't make these types of melodies just because you don't have Arcade. But anyways, this is what the vocal chop sounds like. Next, this is the only thing that's really different about the Pain Beats on Lil Durk's album compared to most Pain Beats, and that's that they feature a decent amount of bass guitars. Maybe this is common in other Pain Beats, but I haven't heard it that much, so let me know in the comments. So I got this bass guitar sound out of Purity, it's just the bright string sound. Purity has a very underrated bass guitar section, so if you have Purity, definitely check it out. But really, this is a pretty simple melody, we're just following the root notes for the most part. Then we've just got a couple extra things, you know, a little slide right here, and here we walk it down. But Overall, not too much going on. This is what it sounds like. So you'll notice here at the end, we're just following the root notes. That is partly because I just got lazy, but mostly it's because we actually have too much going on right here. So we've obviously got quite a bit going on here in the vocal. Then we've also got some stuff going on in the guitar. And obviously there's still stuff going on in the piano. You just want to make sure that you don't have too many things going on at one time. Otherwise, it's really going to complicate it and throw off the bounce. It really just doesn't sound good. Better to spread things out throughout your loop. That way you don't really have any empty spots either. And that's pretty much it for the melody. Next, getting into the drums, I just laid out this rim. You can use a clap, snare, rim, whatever you really want to. This is what it sounds like. Then I added in this hi-hat pattern. We just started off with a two-step, then we added in quite a few rolls. You don't want to have super intricate hi-hat patterns, but you definitely do want to have a decent amount of stuff going on. This is where a lot of the bounce for these beats is going to come from. So this is what my pattern sounds like.
Next, getting into the bass section of these beats, you're gonna hear some sub basses, especially in the intro and verses or whenever you might cut out the 808. Same with the bass guitar. But for the most part, your main bass is gonna be your 808. You're mostly gonna hear like medium length 808s. You'll also hear some short ones. Most importantly, you just wanna make sure that they're very clean. You don't really wanna have any distortion going on in these. For your pattern, you're gonna wanna keep it relatively simple, but definitely make sure that it's pretty bouncy. As you can see, we're just following the root notes throughout this whole thing. Even here, these are just octave jumps, so they're still on the root note. For your rhythm, you definitely are gonna have some interesting things going on. For example, I've just got this little clip right here. Stuff like that, we've got a little roll and whatnot. But overall, nothing too complicated. This is what it sounds like. Next, I just layered that with a kick. Sounds like this. For these beats, you'll notice that they're all gonna have really punchy kicks. It's almost gonna sound like it's clipping. So it's very important that you use good sound selection for your kicks and your 808s in these beats. Make sure that they're really knocking. You don't wanna have any weak kicks in there. Next, I just put this hi-hat on the one. That's kind of going to help with that clipped sound on the first beat. After that, I just added in another hi-hat. Very simple pattern, it's just hitting right before the rim every other bar. This is what it sounds like. And this is actually all that I added to the beat. Next, I just mixed it down. So starting off with these effects, I've just got an RC20 on the piano. I did turn this tone knob a little bit to the left to make it a little bit softer. And then I also widened it up just a little bit. Then I have this telephone EQ on the pad. This just kind of sets it in the background and makes it sound a bit better. Then we have a reverb and a delay on the guitar. Then on the vocal chops, we've got this EQ. This is very common on these vocal chops. You're just gonna cut out a lot of the lows and a lot of the highs and just leave some of these high mids right here. Then we've got a very washed out reverb. All the settings are pretty standard except that we're going to turn the dry way down and turn the wet way up. This is going to set it in the background and make it very airy and spacious. And those are the only effects that we used. After that I just leveled it. If you guys want a more in-depth tutorial on mixing I've done one of those videos so I'll link that up in the card in the corner. After that I just laid it out. Very simple arrangement there's really nothing to go over here so I'm just going to play this beat and let you listen to it. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of this beat down in the comments. But without further ado, let's hop into the more street style of beats. Before we do that though, make sure you go follow me on Instagram. When I reach 2000 followers, I'm dropping a free MIDI kit. So definitely go follow me. So this is gonna be our harder, darker style of beat. It's also gonna be a little bit more simple. For the tempo, it's gonna be a little bit slower. So it's gonna be anywhere from like 155 to 165. Again, I'm just going with 160 for this. It's still gonna be pretty common for you to hear pianos as the main melody, but you're also gonna hear like pads and choirs sometimes. I decided to go with a choir to switch things up a little bit. I just laid out a very simple pattern. There's really not too much going on here. Do keep in mind that using notes that are one semitone apart is gonna give you a little bit of a darker vibe though. That's really the only important thing for me to explain for this melody. In general though, you're just gonna wanna make a very simple and dark melody. So here's what this sounds like. Then in order to give the melody a little bit more energy, I just cloned that sound and I added the same pattern except for I moved it up to the fifth. And then I also moved it down one octave. This is just going to fill up the frequency range a little bit and give it some more power. So with this added in, it sounds like this.
Next, getting into the counter melodies, it's going to be pretty similar instrument selection, although you might also hear some synth leads or some strings. For me though, I just decided to go with a piano. I didn't want to have a complicated melody on this beat, so all that I did was just add in the root note every two bars. This just gives it a nice dark tone. Make sure to do this in a pretty low octave. I did it in the third, but you could do it even down to the second or up to the fourth. Sounds like this. Then, again just to add a little bit more power, I used another piano, and I just turned that one note into a chord, so I added the third and the fifth. This is just to differentiate the sections a little bit and add some more power throughout the beat. So this is what it sounds like. I also decided to have this in the 4th octave instead of the 3rd octave. Before it was just too low and it sounded very muddy. And that's all I actually did for the melody, so obviously there's really not too much going on here. Next getting into the drums, I just added a clap. You're mostly going to either hear claps or snares in these beats. Next getting into the hi-hat pattern, this is actually going to be a little bit simpler than the pain beats. Again, we're just starting off with a two-step and then adding in some rolls. You don't want to have too much going on here, you really just want to keep these beats simple. This is what it sounds like. Next getting into the 808, this is going to be pretty similar to the last beat. Again, you're going to be hearing pretty clean, short to medium 808s with a fairly simple pattern, but definitely make sure it's pretty bouncy. Only thing that's really important to mention here is that I did add a slide right here. But you definitely don't have to do this. I don't think I heard this at all on the album. I just thought it kind of sounded cool, so don't worry about that. So this is what it sounds like. Then we just layered that with a kick and then we took out the rolls because rolls never really sound good on a kick. This is what it sounds like. Then I just added in a little bounce snare. There's not much going on, it's just hitting on the and of four on every other measure. This is what it sounds like. Finally, we've just got an open hat hitting on the four of every other measure. Again, very simple stuff. There's really not much going on here. This is what it sounds like. And that's actually all that I added to this beat. After that, I just mixed it. We've got chorus on that layered part of the choir. This is kind of just to widen it out and make it a little bit more present. Then on the piano, I have the same preset on both of the pianos. This is just there to bring it out a little bit in the mix. So the important parts are the distortion right here, and then we've also got a lot of space. And also make sure that you have stereo turned on for anything that you can. Then we have the width turned up quite a bit. And I also turned the tone a little bit to the right to make it a little bit punchier. And those are the only the effects that I used after that I just leveled it and lastly I just arranged it again very very simple arrangement there's really not too much going on here nothing really worth explaining but yeah that's pretty much it for this video I'm gonna play this beat at the end so you can all hear it but first I'd like to thank you all for watching I really appreciate it please drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already also go check me out on patreon we've got some really cool stuff there it's only a couple bucks a month so if you can definitely go check it out it supports me and I really appreciate it but yeah that's about it so thank you all for watching I really appreciate it and I'll talk to you all in the next video How did the Bermuda make this slap so hard? <laughs>